Welcome back to Pluralsight's Best in Tech Battles. I'm your host, Jeremy Morgan. We are so excited you've joined us for the last of our Best in Tech Battles. And today, you won't be disappointed. Our influencers will be battling it out on one of our favorite tech topics, AI. Are robots going to take over the world? Are we creating our own downfall as a human race? Or is AI creating more space for better work from everyone? Don't forget, we need you all to weigh in on who you think makes the better argument so we can declare our weekly winner. This battle is up to you. So if you have a passionate opinion, make sure to share it on social media with hashtag BitBattles to get your community weighing in as well. Over the course of the voting for this week's topic, we will be giving away 20 free premium annual Pluralsight subscriptions. So make sure you sign up to be entered to win on our Best in Tech landing page. And don't forget to read the terms and conditions. Make sure you share this week's battle if you have a friend who you know who might really love a Pluralsight subscription. You can find this week's free weekly courses aligned to our topic of AI below. If you haven't tried your hand at our new Stack Up game, check it out. It's a great way to see how your skills add up with other players. And with that, I'm super excited to introduce you to this week's AI Fighters. I'd like to welcome Greg Shields and Pan. Hello. Hey, thank you. We're excited to have you both weigh in on the ongoing debate that is AI and anxious to see who wins. I'd love to do just a quick introduction for you both before we get into the punches. In corner one, Pan. That's me. Pan is so cool, he only goes by one name. And yes, his real name is Pan. Known as Frying Pan on YouTube and Twitch, Pan is an amazing content creator and talks about everything from general lifestyle, coding, academics, career paths, to the tech industry in general. He currently studies in Canada and interns at a tech company in Silicon Valley. And in corner two, we have Greg Shields. Greg Shields is a principal author evangelist with Pluralsight and has been an IT professional for over 20 years. If you can believe it, he has over 125 courses in the Pluralsight catalog. Greg is one of the world's leading experts on virtualization, cloud, and systems management technologies and is one of the most prolific authors and instructors on IT technologies. Now, before we get into this, any words for each other? Uh, please go easy on me, Greg. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> I think we've been assigned these roles, so uh, we'll, uh, we'll do our best. All right, destroy me, Greg. I'm ready for it. To kick this battle off, I have a question to get us going. Are you all ready? Yes. What is your favorite service that's been empowered by AI? Coolest service, self-driving cars. I think probably one of the most utilitarian ones these days is anything involving um, imagery. Um, in fact, I think arguably at the beginning of AI's preeminence, one of the classic examples of its use was in using the algorithms there to identify photos and categorize them. And just being able to turn that into so many different usable applications these days, is really impressive. Now to kick this off, Pan, let's hear what side of the fence you're on when it comes to AI. Okay, so AI, I think, it can create improvements on many type of like services, products in the world. Uh, like for example, I just said like self-driving cars and like, or weather prediction, you know, all kinds of industry, all the industries could use some AI. And I know, I know I sound like the people who are, oh, AI can solve everything. Like no, but yes. Like I, I think I'm an optimist and I think in the future, this is like the fastest growing, like uh, part of like, actually not just technology but like everything right fastest growing career fastest growing uh field it's it's like ai machine learning all this stuff and although it's like all buzzwords and cool and stuff i think it underlying all that like superficial buzzword stuff there is some substance and that is like that is worth exploring and i think it can create like very good stuff in the world very good impact uh it could create bad impact as well but I, I am an optimist and I think it, it will be able to improve like all the services, all the products in many different industries. Great point, Pan. What do you think, Greg? Well, I, I think I mentioned I've been assigned the pessimist approach or the con approach here for the, for the battle. So uh, taking that uh, role, I guess, to heart, uh, you, you bring up a good point. Um, technologies and careers in artificial intelligence, machine learning are, are 
extraordinarily popular these days. I, I'll argue AI, however, is a term, is more a marketing term than is anything. Um, and it's for a lot of people, it's just a fancier way to say statistics. And so when you talk about, uh, when you talk about the, the idea of artificial intelligence being so popular these days, it's, it's, it's awesome that the folks that have been able to create a term here to engender so much excitement for a, frankly, a, a, a science that, uh, that for a long time didn't get a lot of people very attracted to it. That, that's an awesome part uh, of being able to turn this into a really good, like I said, a good marketing ploy here for, for getting people into, the, into this, this science. The, the, the interesting part about the, the, the cons here is that the unfortunate part of the marketing of AI and behind AI is that I think all too often it's overused these days. And in a lot of situations, and particularly with a lot of products here in, a, in IT, you find that term AI being thrown around when what they really do mean is statistics or what they really do mean is uh, a little bit of automation with some big data behind it. Yeah, yeah. so I, I, I agree with you, Greg, that it's, you know, it's kind of overused as a marketing term, but I think that is like, that's actual, you know, maybe like, yes, there are some arguments that's like, oh, because it's overused, it's, it's not good for like the actual real like AI statistic and all that. But I think um, in the long term, it's actually good because I, I think like ideas like this, it's like memes, they, they go by the, the law of um, um, like um, evolution, right? So like the best ideas, the most popular ideas like stay in the long term. And the fact that like AI is like now hyped up and all of that, it, it makes more people go into that field. Even if some, like maybe most of them are like, are just riding the hype train and it's like, they started and they're like, wait, this is not what I thought it is. Like it's all math, like where's the program? And they quit, but maybe like, there will be a small percentage that because of like this hype train, they get into it and they stay and they become wonderful people who contribute to the field. So I think like the fact that it's like, even if it's like a trendy marketing thing, like AI, whatever, I think it, it, it makes it uh, a, um, better to like for it to survive in the long term. Uh, for example, like you know, like Dogecoin, like Dogecoin, it's like the most the most popular thing survive, right? Like Dogecoin because of Elon Musk, uh, it, it shot up the price uh, compared to like the other coins. So I think like the popularity thing, it, it helps uh, it in the long term, even though it's like kind of superficial. Yeah. Oh, that's a great point. What do you think about that, Greg? Oh, most certainly, absolutely. Having more people that are working on these problems is absolutely improving the algorithms and uh, creating libraries that one can call in their code that are just getting better all the time. So I don't disagree whatsoever that uh, having more people work on these problems is is important for just furthering the the science. There, uh, the, the the thought actually occurred to me too that when when you think about AI too, again, sort of just speaking only to the the overuse of it as a marketing term. I, I, the idea came to me earlier today that AI is, in a way, if you, if you want to use an if-then statement, AI is to calculus as calculus was to algebra. Uh, you think about it, sometimes when you're solving problems in the world, you just need to shift to a more elevated math in order to be able to solve that problem. There are certain types of math that you can resolve there with algebra. And then at some point, the problem gets complex enough and requires enough moving parts that you just have to move to calculus. And we're seeing that now, I think, with the algorithms that we're seeing in machine learning in that there are certain problems that calculus itself can't res resolve. And as a result, we need some of these more advanced algorithms that are becoming machine learning and then the, the overarching term of AI. Well, you know what, Greg? I only stop at calculus three, so I, I'm not, I'm confused uh, of some of the stuff you're saying, but I'm, sh I'm sure you're right. It sounds, it sounds, um, it sounds like you're right. <laughs> Here's our next topic, reducing human risk with AI. Now you could argue that AI reduces human risk, but it could also increase it. Pan, what is your stance on this issue? Yeah, so I, I think uh, in the short term, uh, it, it might, there's going to be a lot of uh, maybe higher human risk. Like, you know, for example, self-driving cars, like failing and, and like killing people even. Uh, but I, I think, um, I, I think like the short-term failures is not an excuse to stop the long-term uh, potential, this long-term growth. You know, it's like, oh, people are going to lose their jobs. Like, yes, but in the past, you know, people who, who drove horses lost their jobs because we had cars. And, 
you know, like we still need cars, right? So I, I think, um, I, I think in the long term, it's still beneficial, e- even though like it, there is going to be uh, bad stuff happening uh, in the short term. Uh, I, the, I think the best we can do is set up uh, precautions as much as possible to like avoid these things from, from happening. Um, but I think ultimately like progress is a good thing for like humanity as a whole in the long term. And yeah, that's, that's kind of how I look at it. Great point, Pan. What do you think, Greg? I think you're absolutely right. When you're talking about uh, solving some of the automation type problems of the world, um, I think it's important here that one shouldn't necessarily, uh, one shouldn't necessarily replace the term automation with AI in the mind's eye. So when you're when you're thinking about the capacity to reduce these repetitive tasks or even eliminate these repetitive tasks that exist in the world, everything from you mentioned self-driving cars to some of the issues in logistics, there dealing with dealing with factories and dealing with um, all the, the work that's involved with storing and collecting and inventorying and getting stuff shipped out of all these major locations for the Amazons of the world. Any opportunity you can have to reduce some of the human error in there, uh, increase efficiency, but also because of just the, the the human propensity for error. If there's a mechanism there that can use some sort of automation to reduce that mechanism for error, then that also stands the chance to reduce the, the mechanism for pain and suffering of the humans. So I, I, again, I, I know I'm, I'm here to, to kind of root for the con side here, but uh, there, there are benefits to be had over the long term in identifying places where automations can take place. The important part there here, here too to recognize though is that AI is not smart, it's eidetic. So when we're talking about the the technologies and protocols and languages underneath the surface of this term, they're not intelligent all on their own. They just have the capacity for identifying patterns and things. And then it's we humans that actually use those patterns and convert those into useful work. So the AI is only as smart as the humans that create it. I I see your point, Greg. I see your point, but I I think... I think it's possible that in the future, the AI becomes like we we're able to create something that is smarter than ourselves. I, I think it's it's within the realm of possibility. Like it, uh, obviously, like computational wise, like machines are way better than us. But you know, as far as like awareness and like problem solving goes, um, I, I feel like it's possible. Maybe like we're not that deep. Like maybe it's not like oh, our soul. Or something about humans is like so special that you cannot replicate. Maybe there's, you know, maybe it's just a deeper algorithm that we just have not found yet. And it just takes time. And at some point we'll be able to replicate. But obviously I'm just uh, speculating. But I, I feel like it's possible. Well, you know, you know the old saying, you can build an artificial intelligence, but it's never a good idea to connect it to the nuclear codes. <laughs> yeah, it's... Probably not a good idea, but <laughs> maybe maybe it's possible. In a previous Bit Battles debate about automation, we talked about abstraction and how we may have abstracted things to the point where future generations have no idea what's going on under the hood. Is that a danger that we face with AI? I can start there. We're already, we already seeing examples of that today here with cloud technologies. We have an entire generation of folks who haven't really had the opportunity or need or reason to touch in, you know, individual pieces of hardware. So we, we are already at the point where the layers of abstraction have gotten to where deep, truly deep understanding of what's going on in systems is, does not exist in, in certain circumstances. So the answer is absolutely yes. Mm, yeah, I, I think that is happening, but I, I don't think it's that big of an issue. Like for example, cars, like I don't know how to make a car. I don't know how my car works. I just press the gas pedal and it goes forward. You know, sometimes it's not like, oh, like absolutely necessary, but I do agree. Like, um, but I made the analogy with the car, but I think there's a difference with computers. And and that's what I think most people should learn how to like, you know, how a bit of like how the computer works. Like, it's not just like a magic box. Maybe learn a bit how to code like for everyone in like, uh, I don't know, elementary school, high school. So because, you know, in the age, like in the past, right, when... Uh, people like started speaking or writing like 
that was like a thing. You, you have to become literate. So like now pe then people will learn how to like speak, how to write. And then afterwards, uh, numbers became a thing. So now people learn how to do math, how to do arithmetic. And now like computers are a thing. So I think the language now of computer is like code, right? So now people should kind of learn how like how to code or how to, or at least how like tech works um and, and i think ultimately it's like a, kind of like an educational thing uh like people should upskill in this sense uh in, in this like area in general the, the point is fair you know i think i think i've said it before a couple of times when we're talking about ai here it's a marketing term it's and these days anymore it's a marketing term that's just a fancy way to say uh i am calling a tensorflow library in my code <laughs> no it's actually pytorch greg or PyTorch, exactly. <laughs> I'm kidding. Awesome. So for round two, everyone's favorite topic, the dangers of AI. Now, Greg, you mentioned the nuclear codes earlier, so let's start with you. You know, there's the danger too, just, just the high cost of implementation. There is so much effort that's required to train an AI these days that um, I think sometimes organizations that decide to go down that path don't recognize that there's there's this notion of garbage in, gar garbage out. And so you can go call that PyTorch or, or TensorFlow library there for your code, but then there's all the efforts involved to actually gathering the materials to be able to turn it into something actually useful. That also highlights the, the further fact that AI just in general, the, the, these machine learning languages and protocols, these libraries, they, they, they don't have any internal sense of ethics. They are exactly what we give to them and their job is truly just to find the patterns and whatever it is we hand to them. So there always is that concern that no matter what you end up creating, no matter what tool you use to, to manifest the intelligence that you're trying to build, it's only as good as the, the inputs that you give it. And we as humans have just, just by nature, the, the, the capacity, just the, the reality of putting in the things that sometimes actually are self-fulfilling. Like if we create an artificial intelligence that can find the patterns that we want it to, it's going to, they're going to find the patterns that we want it to. And we've seen example after example of that and where various um, image recognition technologies end up doing some really poor uh, generalizations of, of photos. Or we've all heard about the chatbots that went completely off the rails very quickly after getting turned on. So the, 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 the biggest concern or danger, I think, at this point is, is perhaps not so much the, the libraries themselves, the protocols themselves, but what we as people will do in order to turn them, to, to provide them input, to turn them into something that's useful. Okay, I'll flip the script on you guys, Jeremy and Greg. What is the danger of no AI, right? If, if we don't improve AI, if we don't improve in this direction, then it means things like stay more or less the same as now. And now, like, things are not good in the world, right? Like, we are, you know, a lot of bad stuff are happening. And uh, a lot of it is due to the fact that, like, us as, like, humans, we have unlimited needs, but there are, like, limited resources. So, like, I think AI is the way to, like, like, the only way to increase these resources for all of our needs is, is to maximize the efficiency of how we utilize all these resources. And I think... Like AI and technology is what's going to help us uh, reach that point, right? Go higher and higher um, to satisfy like all of our unlimited needs. And I think like with that, we can improve better as a society. Whereas if we don't have that, then yes, we don't have all of those dangers, uh, those risks, but then everything stays the same and like... Uh, for me, like that's, I don't think that's like the solution. Right. And, um, yeah, like I, I want to see some, pro I guess I'm, uh, I'm kind of like risky. I, I, I want to see some progress. Like even if, even if it means like robots kill all of us, <laughs> okay, I might be going too far, but, um, yeah, I, I, I think, uh, the, the risk, there's risk either way of either staying as we are now and not improving AI or improving AI there, there is risk either way. But personally, I would rather take that, um, the, the second path of uh, with the AI, you know, like I want, I want to see something new in this world. Uh, maybe I'm just bored. <laughs> <laughs>
Awesome. So we've covered a lot here from the optimist view that AI is improving the world and brought up some areas where we may want to pump the brakes a little bit. So for our final round, let's hear those closing arguments. Greg, we'll start with you. Sure, closing argument. Um, I think it's pretty easy. Um, artificial intelligence is not going to replace humans anytime soon. Now, there are various tasks to be accomplished that automation and the, the machine learning and the, the, the artificial intelligence type of technologies are going to automate. Those jobs may actually no longer be necessary at some point in time, but that's just life. That's just reality. There was a point in which there needed to be an individual who pumped gas into your car because there was no capacity for people to do that. At some point, people didn't really understand how to pump gas in the car. Uh, the, the point was made earlier about knowing how to work in your car. There's a lot of people these days that don't know how to actually change oil in a car. But due to automations, whether we call it AI or not, due to automations, we no longer have as important those requirements to, to get through life. You know, you can even go all the way back to food generation and farming. Um, a lot of us don't generate our own food anymore. We don't raise our own cattle and grow our own vegetables. So just life in general tends to demand ever-increasing automations just as a result of the, the need to not do those things anymore. A solution for that may be AI. A solution for that may be machine, le machine learning, maybe any of these technologies that we're talking about here. But the most important thing to recognize is that it's not going to replace humans over the long term, but augment what they can do. And the other important point is just a, in fact, on a course I'm working with right now with the Pluralsight catalog, the old adage of don't collect data that you don't plan on using. Um, as we're going about actually de determining where and when to use these different technologies, if there's no real good use for the data, let's not collect the data in the first place. That's a great point, Greg. Pan, what are your thoughts? Yes. My closing argument is that Greg made a lot of good points. And yes, there's a lot of risk. And perhaps, perhaps that it's impossible that AI replaces human in the future. Even though I, I would like to see that happen. Perhaps it's impossible. Perhaps it's not for the best. But I believe that the journey is what's important and not the end goal. And the process to reach that point is exciting. And we need that meaning in our life to discover something new. AI is like the most exciting thing nowadays even though if really go come down to it it's just like math and stats but it's it's still exciting the possibilities are endless and i think if if there's a field you're if you're a passionate person you know you want to go into a a, a cool field that has future ai is is the one for you or software engineering you know something related to this and even if ai doesn't replace humans completely i i believe the future is one that is there's some kind of symbiotic relationship between AI and humans. And, and I think I want AI to progress. I want AI to progress in the future. I think it will, it will create good in the future. I think humans will, um, they will set great regulations. Uh, like they're starting to realize now that, you know, we need to set some regulations on this. Like, you know, some people are in the lab developing AI and it's, it's going to kill everyone. So regulations are coming and, it's just a matter of time. And as long as we take precautions, I think we should keep improving AI uh, until it kills us all. <laughs> That's like... Yeah, there's some really quotable remarks today. Thank you both for being here, Pan and Greg. And now it's up to you all to crown our AI bit battle winner. Go to this URL, also in the description, to cast your vote. You have until 11 a.m. Eastern on Friday to tell us what you think. Spread the word on social media and let your network know who your winner is. Are you pro-AI or do you fall on the other side? Use the hashtag BitBattles to take a stand. And don't forget, your vote is how we will crown a winner, so make sure to click that vote button below. Did this battle inspire you to learn more about AI? Make sure to check out and share our free weekly AI courses or test your skills on our brand new Stack Up game. I challenge you to see if you can make the leaderboard. And don't forget to enter to win one of our free annual premium Pluralsight subscriptions. We hope you had fun with us during these friendly debates over the last three weeks. Thank you for joining us and be sure to vote.